We're here today in Atlanta, Georgia at Porsche's North American headquarters to find out about Porsche's new Taycan software update. This update is available for all current Taycans. That's over 75,000 of them worldwide, and it improves a lot of the features. Now, one of the things it is supposed to do is offer greater driving range. So we're gonna take this guy out and see if that is true. We're gonna do the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test with this beautiful rear wheel drive frozen berry Taycan and repeat a test we did on a similarly equipped vehicle about a year ago. But before we do that, we're gonna learn a little bit more about this new Taycan software update from Porsche's product manager for the Taycan, Calvin Kim. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any electric vehicle news and reviews here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. Okay, so Calvin, the Taycan is already one of my favorites, maybe my favorite electric vehicle. Absolutely love them. I, as you know, I take every advantage I can to do a media loan on a Taycan. Me too. <laughs> and, and I've driven pretty much every version of it so far. And now you're telling me the software update is going to make the existing cars on the road, all of them, better. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Right, so we wanted to improve overall performance, just everyday usability. That's always been our main goal, uh, You know, combining super fun driving experience with everyday usability. That's one of our paramount pillars, if you will. Uh, but we also wanted to improve the user experience, which, you know, it's not uh, a sea change. The fundamental core aspects of the car are already there, but we wanted to change the look and feel a little bit, add extra functionality like wireless Android Auto, for example, Spotify integration. Uh, but I think for most Taycan owners, the big change is going to come from the from that everyday usability component. One of the big things that they did was the improve improved uh, the function of range and normal mode. Uh, in the olden days, if you will, you would decouple the rear motor, but now with cars like the rear motor Taycan, you can't do that. So what they did is they took a lot of the learnings from the rear drive Taycan and applied it to all the other models. And that's by de-energizing the front motor and optimizing the control strategy of that rear power unit, if you will. Another thing they did is they improved the thermal management system so that if you are at a higher state of charge, uh, you still can get the same excellent charging curve. Uh, you get onboarded onto that uh, excellent, the, the ideal charging curve as if you had a low state of charge. Uh, you and a lot of other people have experienced that really awesome charging curve when you have a low state of charge, but now, even if you come in at 30, 40% SOC, you'll still get excellent charging performance. Yeah, so that, that was really important to me. As you know, I, I love EV charging. So the overall optimal charging curve isn't gonna change because right. the, it, you know, the Taycan already charged fantastically, except up to 270 kilowatts. It can charge from 5% to 80% in about 22 and a half minutes, yep. somewhere around there. And we've done that in our charging tests. But what this software update has done was previously the battery temperature really had to be at a specific range in order to get the optimal charging curve. You've opened it up a little bit now, right. so people will get a uh, better charging experience exactly. from a wider variety of use cases, you know, when, when w with the vehicle. So that's great. So you don't have to concentrate on getting that battery, I think it was like 92 degrees or 93 degrees Celsius uh, Fahrenheit. It had to be <laughs> perfect to arrive and when we did our charging tests we made sure that was the case but now owners won't have to sweat that exactly um, and another thing how about regenerative braking uh, I, I read in the in the release that there was uh, an improvement to that also right so in the old way uh, or the way it is at this exact moment uh, what happens is when you switch the recuperation strategy uh, it doesn't carry over when you switch drive modes so hypothetically if you're normal and you want uh, adaptive re adaptive recuperation, and then you see a freeway on ramp up ahead or a twisty mountain road, and you switch to Sport or Sport Plus. Uh, that recuperation strategy wouldn't carry over to that okay. drive mode. Yeah. Now it does. Right. So if you enjoy more uh, regenerative braking off of the throttle pedal, off the accelerator, you can have that. If you still prefer to use traditional uh, accelerator brake performance as Porsche has always done, that's available too. Okay, good, and you don't have to remember to exactly. switch it if you're playing around with the different drive modes, right. which 
you always do if you have a Porsche to try those things out. Exactly. But here today for my range test, I'm gonna be in range mode, yep. uh, which means now with this new software, the front motor isn't, oh, this is, this is a rear wheel drive. Yeah. If it was an all-wheel drive Taycan, the front motor wouldn't be doing much work at all. It would be right. decoupled and de-energized. Exactly. So yeah, but again, this is the rear-wheel drive. This is the Taycan with the greatest EPA range rating. Uh, this is 225 miles yep. uh, EPA, and although uh, with the new software update, it actually would be certified at more. Uh, but you're not going to recertify the cars. I wouldn't think you would do that over a, over a, just a software update. No. The 2023s will get recertified, or news, we're not sure news, about news that. that to come. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. Now we fully charged this guy. We're at 100. percent I'm going to hop out onto the highway as I always do. Drive at a constant 70 miles an hour, and we're going to see how far the Taycan goes with the new software. I believe I'm one of the first people to do this outside of Porsche. Absolutely. Yep, you're the first. The first, so okay. Inside EVs, the first. We're gonna be driving the Taycan with the new software. We're gonna see how much range is improved. Now, the weather conditions aren't perfect today. Uh, we might get a little bit of rain. It's really hot and muggy, so I'm gonna have to have the air conditioning on. But hey, this is real world. We're gonna see what this guy does on a real world 70 mile an hour highway range test. All right, well, we're on the road beginning the range test. And, you know, I have to say, I am impressed that Porsche is doing this with the Taycan line and literally updating every Taycan that was made. Now, I do have to point out that while the Taycan is over the air software, software update capable, this update has to happen at the dealership. So you do have to bring your Taycan in and it's a full day service. And uh, from what I understand, part of this service update is going to also increase the amount of things that can be updated through over the air updates in the future. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, one thing that it's not going to fix is that the early Taycans, actually the Taycan launched as a 2020 model, but it wasn't until mid 2021 that the Taycans came with plug-in charge. And that's the seamless charging transaction with charging stations that are plug-in charged enabled where you just pull up, plug in, and it will communicate to the charging station, the vehicle will, and seamlessly start your charging session and build your pre-set up account. Uh, the early Taycans don't have that feature, but what Calvin did tell me is that although it's not included in this update, they are working on that and it's going to be offered to the all Taycan owners. So if you have an older Taycan, a 2020 or a 2021 that was built in the first half of 2021, you will be able to get plug and charge if you want to. It's just not ready just yet. Okay, so let's talk about the range test. As I mentioned earlier, this is a rear wheel drive a base Taycan. It has the Performance Plus battery pack, so it's a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. And of that 93.4 kilowatt hour, 83.7 kilowatt hour is the usable capacity. So I've got probably about 83 kilowatt hour to work with today. I did a previous range test on a, the same spec vehicle as this last year and I went 297 miles. So my hopes are that I'm gonna eclipse 300 miles today. If, if I don't, then you know there really wasn't much improvement with this software update. So uh, I'm thinking we should definitely push over the 300 mile limit, which is gonna be great. Now this has the 19 inch aero wheels with uh, staggered tires. The rears are 275, 45 Michelin Pilot Sports and the front are 225.55. So um, it's got good size rubber on it. You know, it's nice wide tires, not quite as wide as the Turbo or Turbo S Taycans have, but there's some pretty good rubber on this vehicle. I'm sure if we went a little bit narrower, we'd get even more miles. But after all, this is a Porsche and its main job isn't range. You know, you want it to have range, but it's performance and you've got to have some good rubber to get that. Okay, so first thing I did was check the speedometer to GPS. And uh, as I found with other Porsches, it's, uh, the speedometer is slightly off. I had to set the cruise control at 71 miles an hour to get a true 70 miles an hour. So we're locked in at 71 miles an hour. I have the climate control set to 70 degrees. It's hot today, it's in the mid 80s, so I need air conditioner. It's in uh, the middle of July in 
Georgia, so it's super humid and hot, as it always is down here. And I'm on a different course than what I usually take. I usually do these range tests on the New Jersey Turnpike, but uh, the only way I could do this was down here in uh, Georgia by Porsche's headquarters. So I'm driving on 75 South. I'm gonna go maybe 150 miles or so, turn around, then head back. Uh, we always do these loop the style uh, range test, which I'm going to do here today. And uh, so about half the test is going to be driving in one direction and half the test in the other. And that's to offset any elevation changes and also any wind, which um, while I'm on that subject, I checked my wind app. It's a little windy today, M more wind than what I would like to see. We actually have a uh, 10 mile an hour almost a headwind now. Now that's going to turn into a tailwind when I turn around and head back north. But 10 miles an hour is enough to affect a range test. I like to see the wind at under five miles an hour when I do these range tests, but that's not something we can control. And today was the day I could have the car. And speaking of what I can't control, it also has passing showers today. And it was raining for a few minutes before. Now it wasn't raining hard enough or puddling on the roads where I think it would affect the range test, but that's something I have to keep an eye on because there's about a 50% chance of rain all afternoon today. So I might run into that and that could also shave a few miles off of the range test. We won't know until we finish the test. I'll let you know how the weather goes as we're going. But for now, uh, it was a little uh, little drizzle for about 10 or 15 minutes. Wasn't enough to really affect what we're doing here. All right, so we're gonna continue driving. I'm gonna check in at 75% state of charge and we'll see where we're at. All right, we're at 75% state of charge. We're a quarter of the way through the range test. And we have gone 87 miles. Now, in my first Taycan rear-wheel drive 70 mile an hour highway range test, I went 81 miles in the first quarter. So as a comparison, we are ahead by a decent amount. Now, we're tracking like 320 miles, somewhere around there, because we're averaging 3.86 mile per kilowatt hour. Now, that's at uh, 25.9 kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven. I have that set up and the Taycan allows you to display your consumption in a number of ways. And I have it kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven, uh, basically because it's more accurate than the uh, miles per kilowatt, kilowatt hour. That only gives you the, uh, the uh, consumption rate one, des one point past the decimal point. So uh, this gives me a little bit more of an accurate way to look at it. So yeah, I mean, 3.86 mile per kilowatt hour uh, on, a, on a Taycan is fantastic. I finished up the previous range test on this with 3.5 mile per kilowatt hour. So that's a significant increase uh, you know, in, in efficiency if we're able to maintain this the whole trip, which you know, we, I have no idea if we're gonna end up with that because we do a lot of these range tests and quite frequently it changes during the range test, especially when we're considering we have slight elevation changes here. We've got wind thrown into the, the equation. So who knows what we're gonna finish up at, but if we do track with what we've gotten so far, 320 miles-ish, that would be fantastic. All right, um, one last thing I forgot to mention before when I talked about what I do to set up the vehicles, we did set the tire pressure to the uh, specified or recommended tire pressure. And one cool thing about doing this here at uh, Porsche's headquarters is they have an air compressor right in the garage. Well, they should because it's right next to their track that they uh, let people drive on and uh, do all kind of testing on here. So uh, they need an air compressor there. And uh, I was able to set the car up so it's perfectly in tune to what it's supposed to be. I don't overinflate the tires. You know, if you, if you pump up your tires a little bit higher tire pressure, you'll get better range than what you would if you had lower tire pressure. Not that I'm recommending you do that, but I know a lot of people that have EVs do put it three or four pounds per square inch higher than what the recommended tire pressure is. And uh, if you don't go too much higher than what the recommended is, you should be okay. It shouldn't be any type of a safety problem and, and you'll get slightly better range, but the compromise will be ride harshness. The, the vehicle will probably ride a little bit harder if the tires are, are overinflated a little bit, but you can squeak out a few extra miles. All right, we're going to keep driving now and uh, I'll check in when we're halfway there at 50% state of charge and we'll see where we're at. At 50% state of charge, we were at 164 miles, meaning we went 10 miles less in that quarter, 77 miles as compared to the 87 we covered in the first quarter.
All right, we're at our final checkpoint before we end the range test. We're at 25% state of charge, and we've gone 236 miles. So we have gone less in each of the first three quarters of this range test. We went 87 miles from 100% down to 75, 77 miles from 75% down to 50%, and now we only went 72 miles from 50% to 25%. It's got me a little worried, because right now <laughs> I'm 66 miles from the charging station and the predicted range is 66 miles. So, I mean, if it's dead on, we'll make it, uh, but I'm getting a little concerned. I'm in an unfamiliar territory. I'm not familiar with the roads here down in Georgia. I don't drive a lot. I'm sure I can use my apps, plug share and so forth to find chargers if I have to. But, um, you know, being out of my element a little bit has me a little nervous. Now, a few weeks ago, I ran out on of uh, charge with the Chevy Bolt EV when I was doing the 70 mile an hour highway range test. First time that's ever happened to me. So I hope it doesn't happen twice in the same month. We're really cutting it close here. And one of the things that I know about the Taycan is it doesn't have a lower end buffer. When you hit zero, you're at zero and plan on the car shutting off and rolling really soon after it's at zero. Some electric vehicles have a big buffer and once you hit zero, you can drive for miles. Uh, most you can drive a certain distance, but I know the, the Taycan doesn't work that way. There's very little left in it once it hits zero. Uh, and if you're going up any kind of an incline, forget about it. When it hits zero, you're, you're dead. Tesla vehicles actually have a really big lower end buffer. And I've heard some people report driving as much as 20 miles after the state of charge reach, reaches zero. But uh, we're not doing that here today, so we'll see. I might have to take a look at my apps and see backup stations and maybe not go to the uh, Electrify America charging station that I was planning on going to. Um, I'm sure there's other uh, charging stations in the area, even if it's not a DC fast charger, I don't mind if I have to plug in level two for a little while just to get me to the uh, to the DC fast charger. But in any event, uh, as the range went down in each quarter, so has our consumption rate has gone up. We're now at 27.2 uh, uh, kilowatt hour per 100 miles driven, which comes out to 3.67s miles per kilowatt hour. If you remember at our first check-in, we were at 3.86 mile per kilowatt hour. Now we're down to 3.67. So um, uh, I don't know if it's the elevation here. There are elevation changes on this road. It's not as flat as where I do it on the New Jersey Turnpike. So I am going up and down and the wind has gotten worse. I'm seeing gusts now up to 14 miles an hour with consistent wind at like 11 or 12 miles an hour. So I am certain that that is taking its toll on this range test and um, I would bet that would probably get five or ten miles more if the wind was like two or three miles an hour and just really super calm and I was on a flatter course so um, I'm still hoping we're still tracking to just barely beat 300 miles uh, and uh, I hope we get there uh, you know it, it is what it is when we when it hits zero the range test is over I'm not going to push it on the Taycan but we're currently tracking to just eclipse 300 miles which really isn't much more than the two, 297 I got on the same vehicle when I did the range test last year but as I mentioned the conditions were a little bit better and driving conditions make a big difference when you're doing these range tests. Elevation changes and wind can easily, you know, take 10 or 15 miles, maybe even 20 miles off your range test. So, uh, you know, we always like to let everybody know that we do these range tests not to try to uh, prove or disprove EPA or WLTP range ratings. Uh, your range is always going to vary. Every time you drive your vehicle, there's different conditions, different weather conditions, different topography. And uh, we like to do these range tests just to give people an idea of what you would get if you hop out on the highway and drive at a steady 70 miles an hour in similar conditions to what we experienced. Okay. Um, we're going to check in when we are done. I hope that's at a charging station and not on the side of a road. All right, update. So I'm bailing on my original plans to go to an Electrify America DC fast charger because I don't think we're going to make it. We would end up with somewhere just shy of, I think it was 315 or 316 miles. I don't think we're going to make it. So <laughs> I use plug share and I found a charge point DC fast charger that'll have us finishing up right around 
305, 306 miles. I think that's all she's gonna give us here today because we have been going down in each quarter and even in this final quarter, I can see that we're not gonna go as far as we did in the last quarter. So I don't wanna be calling a tow truck down here in Georgia and then have to call Calvin up at Porsche and say, hey, um, gotta come get your tr car. It's stuck here on uh, 75 Norths in some town that I don't exactly know where I am. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's gonna be the plan. Uh, we should end up with right about 305, 306 if we make it there. And that's actually really good to be honest with you. Pass this guy's going slower than 70. Um, so the thing is, the Taycan right now, the rear wheel drive Taycan that I'm driving is EPA range rated at 225 miles. That's the combined EPA range rating. The highway EPA range rating is 239 miles, almost 240. I think it was like 239.8 or something like that. We call it 240. Uh, and we're gonna crush that. We're gonna do, you know, 60 miles plus more than that. But the Taycans always far exceed their EPA range rating. It's the only electric vehicle that we drive, and we've tested all of them, the Cross Turismo, the, the Turbo. They crush their EPA range rating by like 25 to 30%. No other electric vehicle that we test beats the EPA range rating by that much. I guess they're just geared for higher speed driving and perform well at highway speeds. Um, I really don't know exactly why they do that, but they do. Now with this software update, Porsche was saying that it was gonna increase the range about 50 kilometers. Uh, that's WLTP rating. They didn't talk EPA. That's 31 miles EPA. I mean, 31 miles, uh, uh, miles. 50 kilometers is 31 miles. So the EPA is usually about 10 to 15% less than WLTP. So even if we say instead of 30 miles, it's you know 24 or 25 miles, we're not gonna go 24, 25 miles further today than I did in my last range test with this same model. We're probably gonna beat it by about 10 miles maybe. Um, uh, it's still better, it's still an improvement, but we have to consider the conditions. The conditions weren't as good in this test as they were in the last test. I think if everything was perfect, I'd probably get close to 320 with this, which is absolutely fantastic. When I did my brand new 2021 Tesla Model 3 range test, but that was dual motor, this is rear wheel drive, you have to qualify that, I ended up with 310 miles. So the Taycan rear wheel drive now is on par range-wise, highway range-wise, with the um, Tesla Model 3 uh, dual motor. Uh, not the performance version, but this is by far the performance version of the Taycan. There's 4S above this, then Turbo, then uh, uh, you know, Turbo S, so, and then there's GTS now. So uh, I love that Porsche's doing that and giving us all different flavors of the Taycan. But honestly, this one here, the base model, rear wheel drive, if you're in an area that you don't need all wheel drive, you're not in a Northern state where it's, it's frequently uh, snow and ice on the road, uh, this is the buy, man. This car drives so well and it's not that expensive. Uh, you can get one relatively, well equipped for a hundred thousand dollars and I mean a hundred thousand is very expensive I know that most people can't afford that but if you compare it to some of the other Taycans you know you're pushing two hundred thousand you can get two of these for a loaded turbo s price so um, but with today's market I don't even know if you can get one it's crazy with the chip shortages it's hard to get any kind of vehicle unless you order it and wait a year uh, but anyway um, good showing I think I hope I'm gonna make it just wanted to give you that update of where we're at right now and um, if all goes well I'll be at the charge point charge station and we're gonna have about 305 or 306 miles on the trip meter see you then all right so we made it I plugged in after ending the range test with 305.6 miles and a consumption rate of 3.66 miles per kilowatt hour. Now I did pull off of the highway at 301 miles, but there was still 2% state of charge. So I drove on some secondary roads at about 50 miles an hour. So it was a little bit slower. And I drove it down to the point where the state of charge said zero and there were zero remaining miles. So, you know, this is such a great driving car. All the Taycans are. It's one of my favorite cars to do these range tests on, even though it's actually torture to have to just set the cruise control at 70 miles an hour and not go faster at any point in the range test and just watch hundreds and hundreds of cars pass me for the entire range test. 
But anyway, listen, I think Porsche did a good job with this update. It didn't just improve the range. They did a lot of things, and it shows me that they're really committed to improving the ownership experience for all Taycan owners, not just the new vehicles that they sell. So kudos for Porsche for putting out this that improves a whole bunch of things. I tell you, on the inside, the first thing that I noticed was the uh, the full color display now on the center screen. That's an update before it didn't have colored icons, which it has now. But other than that, on the inside, you don't really notice that much of a difference. You really don't even notice any difference in the driving experience, which is kind of good because it was always a great driving experience. Now it just gets a little bit more efficient and they have incremental improvements on a bunch of the systems. If you really want to know everything, what this this update did. We have a full article on it on Inside EVs. I'm going to put the link to that article in the description of this video. Well, listen, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thanks for watching.